Charles from Craving Shaving. How's everybody doing? Um, I'm doing great today. Um, just gonna do a quick shave with a product that I've had for a long time that was sent to me by uh, my friend Scott Rollins. Um, and it's just kind of sat and I kind of have just kind of put it aside for a long time. Um, but that is this soap right here. He sent it to me in this in this glass jar. But it is the Sudsy Soapery Peppermint or Lavender Peppermint. And um, lavender generally isn't my thing. But with the peppermint, it works. I, I actually don't mind it with the peppermint. So I'm really um, excited to give this a shot. It reminds me of a scent that um, Summer Break Soaps did when they first started out called Brain Break that I don't think they do anymore. I think it was discontinued. Um, so this theirs was lavender, peppermint, and vanilla. I don't know if there's vanilla in this. It smells like there could be, perhaps. Anyway, we're going to go with that. Uh, we're also going to go with the car of Christopher Bradley razor because I'm still uh, getting used to that. And then we are also going to be using the uh, uh, just uh, one of my craving shaving uh, brush handles, but this is the super high density uh, jealousy knot loaded with water. Let's shake some of that out. You can see they gel pretty good, those tips. Um, very, very soft. So we're going to use that. Let's go ahead and start building the lather up. I have never used Sudsy Soaperies. It, it, I've, I've heard of it. I don't know that I've ever even gone to the website. Um, I love that this community is so open to, you know, share things like this. Um, and, you know, send samples. I just gave away a pretty much full tub of soap the other day to another friend of mine um, it just wasn't a scent that I enjoyed and I feel like we're so willing to uh, to you know just we want someone to enjoy stuff you know if, especially I've given a lot of samples out to friends and, and whatnot I think samples are they're sample sizes. Uh, it's not like this is a sample from the, from the Sudsy Soapery. I don't know if they even offer sample sizes. Like I said, I haven't really checked out their website at all. But uh, this is lathering up really great. I think I need to add some water to it. But uh, it's building a great lather. Um, I really do appreciate when um, artisans or companies or whatever will send out samples. Um, I was lucky enough for a while there, I should see if he'll do it again, um, Jacob from uh, Lotus Eater Soaps was, uh, he gave me a bunch of samples at one point. I might see if he'll, he'll do that again. It was really nice. I was sending them out with my brushes and people could try that. It's a great soap company if you haven't checked them out. LotusEater.store I think is the website. I'll put it down in the description. Um, but it's a, a great soap and not a lot of people know about it so I think it's a great way to spread the word you know and just say hey here's something that I feel like you would enjoy okay this is a great lather here so we're gonna get started now with the peppermint I don't know if that translates to cooling or not usually they do but I'm not sure I've never tried this before I'm hoping it does because I love me some cooling This is lovely. I like this soap. Look at that. Sheen on it. I like that. The scent is, is I mean, it's pretty 50-50, I'd say, lavender and, uh, and peppermint. So, aptly named soap, I'd say. Um... Going back to the talking about samples, I um, really have a hard time buying a soap that 
I've never smelled before. Um, I have, I've had too many experiences where I've bought a soap and I'm like, oh, I just don't like this. Sometimes I'm like, I don't even like this at all. And that's really hard when you've spent even, you know, like 15 bucks on a soap, even if it's not an expensive one. I can only imagine if that happened with an expensive soap, that would just be really hard for me who has a fairly small shaving budget month to month. Um, I love it when companies will do, uh, you know, sample sizes or like PAA, they do not samples of soap. Well, they do samples of soap sometimes, but they do the uh, aftershave samples, and that's awesome. I'll throw in a couple ones that I haven't tried in every order just to see like is this new one something that I'm gonna like is it something I wouldn't really like um, I think that's awesome that they do that um, and the only time I feel like I can justify just buying a soap without having smelled it first is if they're like, this soap smells like peaches. I'm like, oh, okay, I know what peaches smell like. And I feel like I can justify buying a soap that's, you know, one scent that I'm familiar with already. But Those are fewer and far between. And so... That's one of the main reasons why I probably have more Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements uh, soaps than any other. Not just because it is great, great quality. I'm not going to you know, say it's not. Obviously, it's great quality. And that's part of the reason why I buy so many of them. But also because I can get a sample an aftershave sample that's not I mean it's a dog let me let me pull one out I think I showed these in the last one too just these little vials that's maybe one use I paid a dollar for it you know like it's a great it's it's not like he's losing money on it he's getting rid of teeny bit of of aftershave charging only a dollar which that per ounce or whatever that's probably outrageous but it's affordable to me and it helps me it lets me know if it's something I want to buy I, lo I just think it's a great arrangement I wish I, I, w I wish you could see more of that elsewhere in the community um, Because I really think that it's frustrating not knowing. What something's gonna smell like. Um, I am getting a little bit of cooling, not uh, not like if there was straight up menthol. But there definitely is some cooling going on on my face. I might have to get some Sudsy Soapery if there's any recommendations. I don't think I would buy this scent. Not that it's a bad scent. I just am not a lavender kind of guy. So uh, I don't know if that's right uh, up my alley. But hey, um... The performance has been great so far. I'm going to clean up here, and I'll come back for the last pass. Stay tuned. Okay, last pass. Man, even this little bit of cooling from this peppermint feels really nice today.
It's not too cold in Utah right now. Okay, here we go, against the grain. So in, you know, craving shaving news, as far as my brushes and stuff go, I've really got something cool that I'm going to show you guys here in a bit after this pass. But I'll start explaining it now. So this is not my original idea. I got this idea from someone. Um, who I think in turn got the idea from someone else. So it's definitely not an original idea. But I haven't seen it in brush making. And so I thought this would be cool. I really think this is a great idea. Um, and just to kind of... Let me turn that off. Just to kind of... Uh, for those of you who don't know, kind of the idea behind craving shaving is to have uh, somewhat more affordable uh, artisan-made shaving brushes. I can't do obviously. No one, no one's gonna make handmade shaving brushes for as cheap as, you know, companies like Yaki that can just turn them out factory style, but I'm just talking relatively affordable shaving brush handles. So, one of the things that people are doing in the industry, in, uh, in the brush making community, you've all seen them. They're the hybrid brushes that have the uh, like the beautiful burl uh, with the natural edge and then some clear resin um, to um, go on the bottom so that you can see what's going on um, with all the bumps and stuff so I got some uh, like a big old chunk of burl and I cut it up, rounded it out, and made a silicon mold of it. And so now I'm able to pour resin into that mold and make, no, oh, that's very bright. There we go. And make these really cool, uh, just burl, faux burl little things. This one's um, gold and white. Um, I did one that's brown and bronze. You know, just different, I can I can do whatever I want. And I'm, I'm still going to do ones with the actual burl. And they'll, they'll have to, I mean, burl wood is expensive. <laughs> they'll, they'll be more pricey. But these ones don't have to be, um, you know, $100 for the brush. They can be cheaper, which is awesome. And this is exactly what I was hoping to do with craving shaving. So I'm really excited about that. Hopefully you guys think that's a cool idea. That you're going to start seeing those in the next drop or so. I have butchered my face. I'm still not sure. I have two base plates coming, the A and the double A for this, and uh, I'm really hoping that I, I'm more intuitive with them. As you can see, <laughs> you can see, I have just absolutely obliterated my face. I don't understand this razor. I get sometimes a perfect... I've gotten probably the best shave of my life with this razor, and then I've had shaves like this where I can't even count the... <laughs> <laughs> the weepers. It's crazy. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Wet the face. Get the alum stick. Wet that too. We're just going to... Oh yeah. We're talking... <laughs> All kinds of feedback in the pain receptor area. <laughs> Oh, right there. Oh, goodness. A little tender. I think I was on autopilot too much, and I can't do that with this razor and this base plate. I probably reverted back to the angle that I usually use with my razors, and it just doesn't fly for me. For, me, for my face, I've got to be very careful about the angle with this razor. So, I'm hoping 
that with a milder razor, the A or the double A plate, then I can get that same good shave with. Because I can get a great shave with a very, very mild razor. I'm just maybe lucky that way. But I can do it. Um, I know not everyone can. If you have really full, thick beard, my beard, it's pretty coarse, but it's not thick, and I can I can get away with a mild razor, and I love it. I love mild razors. Um, I think that's taken care of the worst of it, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse that alum off. Great. Lovely. Okay, and then for the aftershave, we're going to go with another menthol thing, skin bracer. This is my beefed up heavy duty skin bracer. Ooh, and that stings even after the alum. That was a rough shave, guys. <laughs> that was a rough shave. Yikes. Everybody. I love making videos and talking. I almost exclusively shave on camera. <laughs> um, I probably would get better shaves if I didn't make videos, but I like to. I like to interact and I like to um, to make these. So hopefully you enjoy watching them. So anyway, faux burl uh, handle brushes uh, coming soon to uh, maybe check. just check out my Instagram. In fact, I'll plug this. It's open until July 10th, um, so this week. Um, but if you head over to my Instagram page, there is a post that is my 1500 uh, follower giveaway, and I'm giving away these. Where are they? These two brushes. So this one is a faux granite, kind of a, a reddish granite. Uh, brush and this one has some resin shavings and it's a it's a red white and blue which is great for the Fourth of July theme for those of you in in the United States it's the the red is very pale so I mean it's almost like a blue and and uh, pink but it it's I think it's pretty cool and these never turn out these never show up on camera as good as they do in person. Really, really cool effect. Um, so those are available for a, a giveaway. I'm also getting closer to my 750 subscriber giveaway here on my channel. And that's what I'm really excited for, for some reason. Um, getting to 750 subscribers. I've been doing this for two and a half years. And uh, it's been kind of a grind, but it's been it's been a fun thing. I'm like blinking because of the, the menthol. Um, anyway, um, so head over there. Uh, and check out my giveaway with that. Um, that's also a good place just to see what I'm coming out with as far as my brushes go. Um, might need to hit that with some styptic pencil. Anyway, um, if you have any questions, comments, uh, ideas of things for me to do, um, I am going to start a series about how to make shaving brushes. If that's something that interests you, that series will be coming out soon. The first video that I'm gonna make is what materials you need or probably should have uh, before you start making a shaving brush. Um, it's it's a pretty big list, so. Um, I There are a lot of things that I didn't realize that you needed <laughs> in order to make shaving brushes, and so I just wanna kind of let people know what you're going to need and, you know, probably general cost of getting started up um, in case someone wants to do that and they're not sure if they can afford it or not. I couldn't afford it when I started it and it, um, <laughs> yeah, it was a grind. So um, we're going to start with that. I also have an idea um, for a way to at least somewhat empirically test the slickness of a soap. We'll see how it works out. Uh, but I'll make a video of it nonetheless. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Craving Shaving. 
Um, I got some stiff dick to, uh, to visit, but thanks for tuning in anyway, and uh, hope you have a wonderful day.